What's going on, Python? It's V here, and today I'm going to show you guys my undefeated uh, Fire King Snake Eye deck profile. Uh, the deck's been 2 0 left and right. The deck's been insane. I made some tweaks to it. It's a 44 card deck. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go on my main side extra and I'll give you guys my reasons of why I played certain cards. So, right as I get, let's go over the, with the hand traps. It's going to be Ghost Mourner, Draw and Lockboard, just one of each. Uh, triple Nibiru, Triple Effect Veiler, uh, Triple Ash Blossom Joy Spring. Triple Imperm. So that's all the hand traps. About 14 hand traps, by the way. And then for uh, some other cards, we're going to have uh, three Dot by Dia Bell Stars, one Flamberge, uh, one Snake Eye Oak, uh, double Poplar, uh, three Snake Eye Ash. Uh, and then for Fire Fire King stuff, we got uh, double Karen, one Arvada, one Ponix, and one Garunix. I don't think that's anything like, too crazy, but that's the basic Fire King, uh, uh, the Fire lineup for this deck. All right. Then we got um, the Snake Eye Field Spell, uh, the Snake Eye Spell You Search, uh, three of um, three Wanted, uh, three Bonfire, one Fire King Island, one uh, Fire King Sanctuary, one for one uh, Talents, and Cross Out Designated. This card's insane, by the way. Like, absolutely insane. I still think that's a 44 card list. Uh, we'll go over the side real quick. So, for the side, we got Double Draw and Lockbird, one Kurikara, Triple um, Summon Limit. Triple Forbidden Droplet and triple uh, Cosmic Cyclone with a Dusta and double um, Talents. And I'll give you guys my explanations for that in a few. So for the extract, we got two Marinthian Princess, uh, one Dark Charmer, uh, one Fire Charmer uh, as well. Uh, we also do play Link Rebo, uh, Nightmare Phoenix, SP Little Knight, Salomon Gets Online Wolf, IP Mascarena. Uh, for our bigger links, so. Yeah, we'll go uh, Celine, Axis Cold Talker. Uh, we also run Appaloosa, uh, Amphibious uh, Whale, and then Zealantis and Raging Phoenix. All right. So we'll start with Dexter Deck, and we'll work our way back. Number, number one, right off the gate, I play two Promethean Princess. A lot of players like to play one. I'm not crazy about playing one. I think two is more than fine uh, because if you use it turn one and somehow your opponent does get you in the later on turns, this card's better later on in the game, say, two bring out. So... I understand the graveyard effect is really good, but listen, that's not always going to be consistent. You want to play two. You want to always guarantee to bring her out. Another thing is I don't play Diamond Unicorn. I play Selene instead. Selene comes up more than Diamond Unicorn. Ideally, you Diamond Unicorn, reset the field spell back into the deck, and that's like, the main reason why you do it. Then you play a Snake Eye field spell. Uh, but Selene comes up infinitely more, and Selene and Axical Talker kind of go hand in hand, especially in this deck. So that's why I decided to put them both in here. Uh, another card that... Uh, I don't play is Deco Talker Heat Soul. I think it's a great card. It's just finding the room. Uh, you can cut an Amphibious uh, Swarm Shirt Embo Well. You can cut this card for a Heat Soul if you want to. The question you have to ask yourself as a duelist is what comes up more, this or Heat Soul? So that's the question you, you would ask. But other than that, other than that one change, this deck is perfect. Like this extra deck is perfect. Honest truth. I think every card comes up a lot of times. I think every card has a lot of value, and I want to change anything other than potentially that one change uh so we'll go with the side deck and talk about it real quickly uh so i run two talents i do main one side two uh this card's pretty good of card in general but obviously one of the big decks that we're seeing especially at the regional level is a lot of players play um voices voice and you want to answer that so my answer to voices voice basically is going to be uh two uh one town in the main so this will be three towns all together as well as three droplet Resolve any of these, I'm pretty sure the Voices Voice is the buy at that point. So, why would you not want to put cards in for that? Uh, for Ring Droplet, it's also really good against the Pure Snake Eyes. The Snake Eye, other builds, it's decent, but against Pure Snake Eyes, this card's insane. So, I really like this card a lot against Pure Snake Eyes. I think it's a great card, so that's why I decided to throw in the side deck as well. Uh, for removal, we have three Cyclone and one Duster. So, if you're play, playing against a player who isn't dumb, uh, especially if they have... Um, we're talking about like Snake Eyes, Snake Eye Fire King builds. Uh, whenever they use their big Snake Eye guy to bring back like an IP Masquerina, when they activate that effect, you just Cosmic Cyclone that. So you don't shotgun this, you wait till they activate to bring it back. You Cyclone an IP Masquerina, uh, and then you're pretty good. You know, it's pretty good Yu Gi Oh! And of course, Duster is just a generically good card. I think this card is too good not to have into your deck uh, because, besides the fact that you're playing against Fires and all that other jazz, uh, you want to play this against Rogue. It's like the, one of the best cards against a lot of Rogue matchups. Three Summer Limit. I know some players like to play Anti-Spell. They're wrong. You play Summer Limit. That's right. Uh, I think Anti-Spell is really cute. 
But if you're playing against a mirror match, fire, you're not scared about amp while you're playing fire. It doesn't really do anything to you. Summer Limit scares the crap out of a lot of plays and a lot of decks. If you go full combo, Summer Limit set, you're probably going to win that game. So that's why I think this is a great card to play in there. I do play the two draw. Once again, it's also for Rogue. I think draw, is an, a draw and Lockbird is an excellent card against a lot of Rogue decks. Uh, a lot of decks that are annoying, like uh, Flunderies, if you, you know you draw them pretty good, such a turn down, and it allows you to play your game and try to kill them. So uh, just good, good against Rogue in general, so that's why I'm putting it in here. And I'm also playing Kirikara. So this card's a little bit of a Rogue card. People are taking this card out of their deck. A lot, a lot of extra decks, side decks. I mean, uh... Don't play Kirikara, and to be honest with you, I think this card's still insane. I think a lot of players took it out, so the ones who, the ones who do play this card get infinitely more value. Um, obviously, it's good against a lot of rogue decks in general, because a lot of rogue decks don't even see a Kirikara that you can search really easily. Uh, but besides the fact that that you know that you can search it easily and do that, uh, you're going to get some mirror matches. You know, A lot of the players are, are popping off boards as much as possible, and Kirikara drops down and it is a big, big body, so... Really, really cool. I think this is a phenomenal card that I think a lot of players need to start playing and respecting because uh, it's a good card. And you only need one of it. So the reason this card deck would normally be 41, but I decided to throw in a playset of Crossout to try it out. And Crossout was insane. I think this card's excellent. If you have an opening hand with like Snake Eye Ash and Crossout designated, you just feel infinitely more confident going into your plays. And it becomes the point where you're just, you're just negotiating. Do I let certain play? You're pulling like Imperms. You're like... Do I cross out the Imperm now, or do I just wait? You know, stuff like that. So, I really like Cross Designated a lot. I think it's an excellent card, and I think a lot of players on the value of realistically how good of a card this is. Some players are playing in the list, some are not. I'm telling you right now, this is a must-have for our list, why we can still play it. Uh, cool thing about Cross Designator also is because of talents, you know. One of the things that we do is we go into Appaloosa, and now opponents get talents that got Appaloosa. Well, Cross Designator hitting a, 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 a talents is really good, actually. Um... I always have this. One for one is going good game, if you're going first. Game one as well if you go first. Uh, that's why it's in there. If I ever go second, I usually take this card out. Just a little heads up on that. Uh, three bonfire. And then we play the full one to the engine. Once again, the snake eye. Nothing too crazy on that. Uh, for the main deck, I don't think it's anything too crazy in the main deck. Is there? A, no, not for. Oh, yeah. So people like to play two Diabell Stars. I've seen some lists even play one Diabell Star. So I don't understand the mentality. And here's why. Because. Diabell Star is almost as good as Snake Eye Ash. And you're not playing two Snake Eye Ash. You're insane if you do that, of course. You're playing three. So with the same mentality, why would you not want to play three Diabell Stars, who's basically Snake Eye Ash? You have to give a card away, but if you summon Snake Eye Ash and they stop it, you can play Diabell it, it, it's like It's a starter. Why would you want to play two? I, 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 I remember I was testing, and I was like saying to myself, I'm like, yeah, I don't even want to play two. And I asked myself, why? Uh, and I didn't have an answer to my own question. <laughs> I was like, hold on. I want to open this card. Yes. This card, Snake Eye Ash, Cross doesn't it? Pretty fucking good hand. Why would I not want to always do that? So, uh, I don't know. I just feel like this is a phenomenal card. Definitely deserves to be at three. Uh, I know in pure Snake Eyes, it is at three. Uh, I think in this deck list, it should be at three as well. Uh, I've been testing it once again, and I think it's an excellent card to have at three. One card I, I didn't want, I didn't put it in, but I was debating on it was Cobalt the Grave. The problem with Cobalt the Grave is if you're going second, it's not as good, but it's decent. But uh, this card is just good in general, so it's a three of in my opinion. This is a must-have card. Uh, for a lot of hand traps, I know pe the people are going to say, the first thing they say is, well, what the hell's going on? You got one draw, one uh, Ghost Mourner. Obviously, it's for cross out. Um, but you know, I'll tell you right now, there's certain hands where you just want to stop some of these cards, like, these cards are pretty good, and I don't know. I feel like Ghost Mortar is not bad of a card, but Veil is better. Imperm is better. Ghost Mortar is kind of adorable what it does, but it has some some certain criteria, you know, uh, certain criteria that affect Veil. Don't give a fuck about Imperm. Don't care, and this does. So it's not a terrible card, but I just think there are better cards to play. Uh, with that said, it's 14 cards, and if I had a 15 slot, it would probably be another Ghost Mortar. Uh, with that said, um, or draw a Lockbird. But um, I'll be honest with you. I like this hand. I like this hand ratio. It is 14. It should be more. I believe with 44, it should be around 15 to 16. Uh, but I really do like it a lot. Like this, I think it works great. And uh, yeah, I think the deck's really good at where it is right now in the game. Uh, before I end this video, I just want to say, guys. Oh, by the way, I'm gonna have another video coming out. I won uh, 100 OTS 22. So there they all are. I have a video coming out soon. Uh, cracking those open. Uh, before I end my video, big shout to Imperium Duels. I just came out from Texas. And I'm pretty tired because that one flight sucked. Um, uh, but I kept getting compliments, not on my mat, which I, it's a really nice mat. 
my shiny cardboard, but my Imperial Duelist deck box. And if you guys want to go ahead and grab one of these, you can use promo code Paisano10, ImperialDuelist.com. Uh, I also use the Imperial Duelist Pegasus sleeves, uh, Imperial Duelist Extra X sleeves. I believe these are Cherubs, I believe. These are absolutely gorgeous uh, Imperial Duelist sleeves. And like I said, I could choose whatever sleeves I want to use, whatever anything I want to use, but uh, this is an awesome One Piece Nami deck box. I mean, look how sick that is. Look how badass that is. It's a One Piece Nami deck box. I've been getting comments. I was down in Texas, and I was looking for a place to move to. And I, I, whenever, I would, whenever I would go play Yu-Gi-Oh, because you can play Yu-Gi-Oh seven days a week down there, uh, I could get more comments on this than anything else. Not my cardboard, not my field center, not my this. So, uh, once again, big shout out to Imperial Dose, guys. You guys want to get people, people to give you comments at your local Yu-Gi-Oh event or regionals or what have you. Definitely go to ImperialDose.com. Once again, ImperialDose.com, promo code Python 10 uh, I'm just telling you guys what like what works because people love this crap. And don't get me wrong, I, I love the color orange, one of my favorite colors. Uh, orange, black, and red, like the three like best colors. Uh, and this deck box is, is insane. I think it's badass as hell. So once again, guys, I really appreciate you guys watching my videos. I'm gonna have some more videos coming up soon. I gotta travel to New York now for a week, uh, so I'll be down in New York. But I'll try to get some videos out there for you guys. But uh, I really appreciate you guys watching my videos. Make sure to hit the like button, subscribe button, comment down below. It's your boy V, and you guys also have a great day.